welcome to the H series of webinars. This series is aimed at new and aspiring sheep producers to give them a step up into the Queensland sheep industry. This How to Sell Wool webinar is part 8 of the series and explores the basics of selling and marketing your wool. This webinar was delivered by Mark Headley, who is the Queensland and New South Wales State Wool Manager at Australian Wool Network on the 15th of September 2020. This is clip one of three and covers options to sell your wool. On the screen are a list of ways in which we transfer ownership of wool. Open cry. Open cry auction is, is our main form of, of transferring ownership and probably takes in the vicinity of 95 to 97% of wool is sold by open cry. Those auctions are held in Fremantle, Melbourne and Sydney on a weekly basis and samples are shown on the show floor so that all our exporters can view, physically view the samples and uh, they go away and put their limits into their catalogue and then we progress into the, the auction room to sell. Has been touted as being a bit of an old fashioned way, but I would say the technology within selling wool has gone ahead in leaps and bounds. I mean, even in the last 10, 20 years, it takes probably about half an hour from the completion of a wool sale for us to be able to have invoices in front of um, buyers and a sale all round up. The only archaic part of it is that we stand up and we still use open cry and, and drop the hammer to indicate the sale of wool. And probably part of the reason behind why that still is in place is that is the quickest form and the most efficient form that we still have to complete that process. Private treaty is, is probably more about where you are comfortable to accept a price within your shed. You must remember, although someone says to me, has said to me there's no cost involved, there is a cost involved. And, and, and if you're going to sell your wool by private treaty, you need to be switched on enough to know what markets are, are worth and what your wool is worth. Because at the end of the day, someone is going to physically purchase your wool and turn around and resell your wool and so their income is is the margin they can make on that product. Forward contracts. Our main forward contract these days is as wool is not traded on the Sydney Futures Exchange anymore, we use what's called an indicator contract which is traded on the Riemann board. So an indicator contract must have a seller and must have a buyer. So it's got to be someone take either end of, of that contract. It is a physical, or it is classed as a physical delivery and therefore non-cash settled. So to get around that, what we do is the grower must sell wool on the maturity date of that contract. And so basically what you're doing is trading the indicator. Now, uh, there are a range of, of indicators you can trade, 18 micron through to 30 micron crossbred indicators. So you are selecting a date in the future and you're locking in a price. Now this, this works extremely well for people to take some volatility out of the market. You know, it gives you the option that if you are comfortable with what you can lock in today for a period somewhere in the future, that you can lock that in. Certainly banks are very acceptable to that because you can take a percentage of your income and lock it in right here, right now, and be able to put that contract on the table in front of your bank manager. Uh, they generally look to be pretty favourable at those. Direct to export, well, it's basically a forward contract. So the difference to a forward contract here is it's a physical delivery. So you would have parameters that you have to meet. So within that direct to exporter, you potentially would have to um, deliver something that was within a micron range within a range of yield, within a range of vegetable matter content, and generally within a range of strength. Prices for these contracts, although may be attractive at the time, there is an element of risk because most of these contracts have a um, clause that, may, that says you have to deliver. If you don't have the product to meet that contract, you have to enter the market and purchase or, or employ your broker to enter the market and purchase wool to fulfill that contract. Direct to mill. Um, so I would probably say this is more direct to mill stroke retailer. There are a number of contracts that are available in the market and we're probably seeing this a little bit more um, active around non-mills wools at the moment. 
where there are actual retailers or well-known brands that are trying to source wool that fits a criteria and similar things some of them you have to meet certain criteria to make that delivery others some of these contracts actually have an exit clause as well so that as long as you participate as long as as long as you are open to present your entire wool clip to them if wool doesn't necessarily meet there are some of the contracts that have a release clause that allow the grower to basically walk away but once again, either of these ways are a good way to take some risk out of the market and something to be able to lock in, if not all, I would say more so a portion of the wool clip and just guarantees your income. We've got online. There are a couple of options online. Auctions Plus have an online option and AWI have an option called WoolQ. They're both available, they both operate, they both work. They're just not liquid enough. We don't get enough participation within those to uh, really take over from current method. That's a general roundup on, on the potential or, or the options of selling more. Thank you for watching this short clip. For more information, please visit www.leadingsheep.com.au.